Hello, I am Frederick Lemieux coming to you from LG Digital Studio at Georgetown University School of Continuing Studies. In focus today, the future of applied intelligence. I'm joined by Suzanne Spaulding, the former Undersecretary for the National Protection and Programs Directorate, NPPD, at the Department of Homeland Security. Welcome, Suzanne. Thank you, Frederick. So let me start with a my first question. Um, recently, U.S. authority claimed that ISIS terrorist organization has been defeated. Um, would you agree? And what should we expect next? Uh, ISIS has absolutely not been defeated. It is the case that ISIS has lost a lot of its territory over which it once had uh, control. And that's important in the long-term battle against ISIS because uh, their ability to, to take over territory and to control uh, territory was used as very effectively as a recruitment tool. Mm -hmm. And so uh, defeating them on the ground has helped to defeat some of their credibility and legitimacy and I think uh, it, it inevitably will have some impact on their ability to recruit. But as we have seen, they're a very uh, adaptable adversary, uh, still very much alive and still very determined to harm the United States and other Western countries. Thank you. And also in 2017 has been um, plagued by large-scale data breaches and hacking in critical information system. Should we expect, expect more attacks in 2018? And what role DHS can play in preventing or mitigating these cyber attacks? So we absolutely should expect more uh, and frankly worse uh, as we go into now 2018. Uh, our, again, our adversaries in cyberspace are very adaptable. It's a very dynamic threat. Uh, they are improving all the time, and we need to stay on top of this as well. Uh, I think we're seeing a, a trend. Uh, we started in the early days of cyber. The focus was really on confidentiality of information, mm -hmm. theft of IP, intellectual property, theft of uh, personally identifiable information. That hasn't gone away, will continue to be a very serious threat. But more recently, we started worrying more about access to data, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Ransomware and, uh, and of course, DDoS attacks have been with us uh, for a very long time, but ransomware particularly grew in importance. I think what we'll begin to see more and more of is concerns about reliability of data. Okay. And the financial services uh, industry is already very concerned about this, uh, certainly takes it very seriously in any event and is working hard on that. DHS has an important role to play in all three of those uh, in helping the private sector to understand threats, vulnerabilities, consequences, and how to manage them. Okay. And you've been talking about like the level of adaptability of ISIS and, and um, also the uh, cyber attackers. Um, according to you, what would be you know, the challenge that DHS has to tackle to adapt itself to, to that reality? Yes. Well, first of all, government, federal government is not known for being particularly agile. <laughs> so that's a challenge in and of itself, whether it's in terms of acquisition, the ability to, to buy the tools that are being uh, improved and, and created by entrepreneurs across the country every day, uh, or adapting our methods to keep up with the adversary methods and policies. Uh, one of the things that I think will really help is elevating the status of the organization in the department that is responsible for cybersecurity and critical infrastructure protection. Mm. You introduced me as the Undersecretary for National Protection and Programs Directorate, which is a terrible name. Uh, and tells you nothing about what we do. Yeah. Congress uh, is moving on legislation to create a cyber and infrastructure security agency at the department. And I think having that status as an agency will really help in terms of both helping folks understand where to go in DHS, but also helping us to be more agile uh, and move more quickly to counter a very dynamic threat. Awesome. Well, Suzanne, thank you very much for sharing your insights. It's been a pleasure talking uh, with you. And thanks to everyone out there for watching. Stay tuned for more from the LG Digital Studio at Georgetown SCS.